gotta get the ideas down while they're sharp. My love, give you my love. I want my love to give you my love. Universal subconscious mind, God, the all-pervading energy that sustains all life, that allows the chirping of the birds, the ability to breathe, to speak, to feel the circulation of blood through our veins, the divine intelligence that resides in all conscious things. I ask that the universal subconscious mind, or God, serve the highest good of all involved in this reading. What messages does the One Spirit have for us today? What messages exist for us on this day? Universal subconscious mind, what messages exist for us on this day? First card, two of coins, presenting options, justice, some sort of legal answer or balance, whatever is just, arriving now. What messages? Oh, jeez. We're going to take it. We'll take these two, the fool, freedom, and in the middle of the reading, the ten of cups. This is leadership. The Wheel of Fortune, turn of finances in your favor. Three major arcana thus far. Ooh. That was the Hierophant and, I just wanna see what this was, that was the Hierophant. And the Nine of, and the Eight of Swords rather. And let's just keep shuffling because they're just jumping out today. But just keep that in mind that those showed up. Okay. Page of Pentacles. A youthful figure. Material achievement. What's the last card? Thinking of the Hierophant and the Eight of Swords. Defense. Defending something, a kingdom. Here we go. Knight of Cups. With the Knight of Cups, that's a romantic offer. And the portal for today on the bottom of the deck. The moon, a hidden treasure. Subconscious mind. We also have a moon change happening. We have a full moon between today and tomorrow. So a lot to discuss. A very detailed reading today. Some new players that we haven't seen in a while. And we're going to take some time to discuss them. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna take this and put it right toward the portal. 
wants to sit in place where it is, so that's fine. Freedom. That sounds good. And I'd say an upturn in finances would be a nice thing for sure, considering what's happened today, the message I received. Knowing that it's in preparation for something much greater. Options. A crossroads. Crossing paths with someone. It's auspicious. Hmm. I love this idea of just complete, total wish fulfillment. What the? Ten of cups. How about some justice? What do you say? <laughs> and justice says, let's bring some stability to our freedom. Drops the fool right down there. Right around his bag, you can see. Justice landing right on the scale too, showing balance. Whatever was wobbly there is no longer wobbly anymore. All right. You can tell that I'm not so much interested in a romantic offer above the idea of this financial freedom. Because the romantic offer comes with financial freedom, it just becomes easier to date and easier to fall in love when you have resources that are instantly available to use at all times. It just makes life fun. Cheers to that. Okay, let's see where things go. Let's distribute our gold. Right there off the bat. See that arc leading from the bag of the fool right here into the arc that is the rainbow, that is the ten of cups, this total wish fulfillment homecoming, planting seeds, children are dancing, you got the couple that's together, they're very happy. In the distance you have these beautiful meadows and you have your home of your dreams and of course the rainbow and it's the end of the emotional challenges, it's the end of this emotional journey. Let's see what else we have and, and of course the fool represents this leap of faith and some leap of faith, some freedom, some breaking from the norms that's leading to this possibility, leading to this reality. Let's see what else. Mm. Wheel of Fortune right there in the center, and it's wanting to pull towards the Page of Pentacles, watch. Mm. Little rejection, okay, let's watch some more. And then the Page of Pentacles right off the table. <laughs> Knight of Cups saying, nope, not yet. Okay, Justice saying, all right, stay away, I've got this figured out. Well, what about these options? Okay, the options are set up. Now how about the moon? How about the moon again? How about the moon again? <laughs> How about the moon again? Ooh, okay. Let's leave that. Let's just see where the rest goes. Hmm. Pushing the Wheel of Fortune's efforts in the favor of the Page of Pentacles. I think there's something going on there. Ooh, almost off the table there, right behind the light. One last opportunity we have here. Let's try to break it up. Okay, now. There we go. <laughs> that was fun. Wheel of Fortune getting spun along with the Knight of Cups. Something with this romantic offer that leads to this break. And look at how it's kind of a phallus in a way. Most definitely. Very funny. Let's push the phallus over here. Let's douse with it. What do you say? <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> and there we go. How about that for a symbol today? <laughs> Funny stuff. Funny stuff. Sometimes you get a laugh. Talk about the yoni or the ankh, the holy lingam. All of these symbols falling into place today. And I love the way that the sequence carried out. So beautiful. Let's start right off the bat with the card on the bottom of the deck. Look at that leaving strength here. Nice to know that it's got her back. Strength falling in line directly with justice. They're very similar. These two cards, very similar. They can be exchanged in number in the deck. But we have the moon here. 
serving as our card on the bottom of the deck as the portal for today. And the moon, two days ago we had it and I spoke about the moon in detail. And there's so much symbolism in this card from the Yod from the Hebrew alphabet to Quetzalcoatl and symbolism from Mesoamerica with the moon and the sun together. You have the wild wolf on the right, the domesticated dog on the left. You got the scorpion slash lobster coming in from shore. Purple showing the blending of masculine and feminine energies which give you balance. You know, the blue and the red coming together giving you balance and yellow brick road, so much symbolism going on. And the idea is you want to go deep into these semiotics, into the discovery of symbols. Even the, the two towers in the background, you see on the left and right extremes, you have the hemispheres of the brain, the subconscious mind, and of course we have the full moon, literally the full moon happening within this day and the next. You know, it's maybe the fifth is the last day of the new moon, but it's right here, I mean, within the next three days. So something to keep in mind as we go forward today, consider that once we have the full moon, it's time for you to remove things from your life. So this is the last big push to plant your seeds, especially considering the summer's on its way. This is the time for us to make some declarations of what we would like to bring into our lives, what blessings we would like to receive. And within that, there is a hidden treasure. Now let's hear what the Marseille Tarot has to say about the portal for our day. If you're imagining working with deep emotions, perhaps something related to a motherly or a feminine figure, if you're imagining a different experience of reality, maybe it's a little spiritual, paranormal, different, for a lack of better words, then you've activated this card. It represents a longing for the unreachable. And so as you have that longing, you can convert that energy into something that is real by focusing on the nation of images in your mind, the imagination. And and so through that, you can find your hidden strengths. So remember that, finding your hidden strengths of all things. You see strength underneath the moon. It's just very symbolic today. Everything seems to be speaking volumes without really having to look into it too much. Everything out here on display for you to understand just blatant, isn't it? And that's good. That's what happens when you go deep. When you find yourself occupied with the remote past, that which, which has been happening, that you want to see change. And through that, you discover this hidden treasure. And I would say the Wheel of Fortune is an indication of this treasure coming forward of course, the fool and justice, all of this points in that direction. There's a lot of auspicious cards. They're all very telling for wish fulfillment. The big message from the moon here is don't be afraid to go deep. Don't. Don't be afraid. Because fear is just false evidence appearing real. Fear does nothing but hold you back from achieving that which you desire. Your past doesn't necessarily want to adhere because your past is your ego and it doesn't want to be subservient to God. It wants to be like a sick tantruming child for the rest of your life until it's time to let you go, saying, sorry, I know you're alone and that you were all along. And then God kind of reaches in and takes you and says, it's okay better luck next time. Instead of getting to that point, better to make your ego subservient in this life. And that takes some significant work, some strength, fortitude, and going deep. Do that and you'll activate the portal of this day and we can start working over here with the two of coins. So let's talk about this card a little bit more. Haven't seen it in a while. Now, along with the moon, the two of coins represents duality, this yin and yang. You see the infinity symbol. We're working with pentacles, coins. So this has to do with earth, the material. And so you've been presented with two options or two elements to life. Perhaps they're working together. Perhaps they're collaborating. You could be collaborating with someone while keeping a distance. And while this is happening, you may be experiencing a bit of a windy road. <laughs> you see the ship sailing in the background, kind of like what we saw with the Three of Wands yesterday. But this is a little bit more turbulent because when you're dealing with twos, you're dealing with the subconscious, you're dealing with the moon, you're dealing with emotions, at the same time, the deep spiritual. So with the Two of Coins, this is a winding road, you are advancing, albeit in complex ways, undulating, moving around. And at the end of the day, what this leads to is recognition and acknowledgement. People finally saying, you know what? It's pretty evident. It's like Austin Kleon says, be so good you can't be ignored kind of thing. And that recognition comes in this case. And I can say that confidently because of 
the card that follows with justice. The scales are in balance, and we saw this with the gold being dropped on the table. You have a very powerful figure. You've got the sun in the background, and you've got the purple color in the background, which is the blending of both blue and red, the masculine and the feminine. You also see this individual adorned in green, which is opulence and wealth, sitting in a fixed position, confident with the sword raised, the sword being the intellect. This is law and order, and the answer's coming to you when they're needed. Justice is a very powerful arcana, and it falls in line with what's underneath the moon for today. And I'm not going to pick up the next card, this strength card, just because I think we've had enough messages for the day. But it falls in line with strength, this justice card. And so justice is described by the Marseille Tarot as law and order. This could be a resolution to legal and court issues. And on a day like today, considering the message I received, it's auspicious. It's a fair and balanced judgment. So if it seems like it's not, just understand it's for some brighter, better result that you may not be seeing right now. Look at the sun in the background. It's trying to show its entirety between these two towers, the hemispheres. It's to say it's all here. The balance is here. Just be calm. Understand that these powers are at work in your favor. So it's a fair and balanced judgment. Just trust that. You have to have trust. And faith is an imaginative work. You have to access the image in your mind that is of justice, that is of what you deserve. So the nation of images needs to be employed in order for this justice card to work in your favor. It represents rationality, reasoning by clear rules and common norms. It's like I'm saying, you know, Newton says for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. So if you're thinking good things and you can expect good things in return, it's a simple as that. This is a touch of grace and humanity beyond the objective considerations. So if you felt like you may have been slighted or perhaps unrecognized for your efforts, understanding how beautiful it really is, just think about that. Think about you being appreciated. Think about feeling worthy instead of getting caught up in the idea that things aren't happening right now, lusting for results, that kind of thing. So the big message from justice is to act with reason and by the accepted norms, which we've already talked about. And at the same time, you kind of have a walking contradiction here with the fool. The fool came to us two days ago, if I'm not mistaken. Sometimes I forget which cards are drawn every single day and that's okay. But the fool is a really powerful card. It's in fact the most powerful in the entire deck of the tarot. You'll see the sun in the background top right corner if you look carefully it's shining beautifully the fool is about to take a trip where the dog knows in the corner probably sees it as perilous the subconscious trying to remind you that little angel on your shoulder saying hey hold on a second you're about to take a dive off a cliff and by the time the fool takes the dive and safely lands and continues walking it's as if nothing's happened at all this is the untouchable individual right here it could represent the beginning of a journey and also the end of the journey understanding there's nothing to worry about. I've been through it all from the beginning with the magi magician to the end with the world and I understand everything in between and now I know freedom is the ultimate form of love that I can offer myself and others and so I'm just consumed by it at all costs. Additional meanings. This represents freedom from conventions and norms. So as much as justice is trying to tell you, follow the norms and conventions, you are offered this option to bring some balance. It's to say, not everything moves in one direction all the time. There has to be some balance. There has to be some balance. And you get that by introducing a little bit of rebellion with the fool. It's not so much as a re rebellious card as the devil, for example, but it's there. Freedom is important. Like I said, freedom is forgiveness. It's the idea of letting go of things. It's being carefree, not getting caught up on things from the past, not being too stuck on whatever's been presented to you. Try not to be fixed in one place for too long, whether it's good or bad. Having a break from those things helps tremendously in activates this card. So you're giving up control. And what I mean by that is it's surrender to this source, surrendering to the zero. This is number zero. It's that idea that it's infinite. It never ends. It never begins. It's birthless. It's deathless. This is the source. So the fool gives you access to the source more completely than any other card in the deck. And so even if there's uncertainty with that next big leap of faith that you're taking, understand that you're protected and you're untouchable. You're pure spirit. This may be a body, but at the same time, it's controlled by some divine source that animates all of us, and that doesn't die. Pay attention to the here and the now by recognizing that you are pure spirit and you activate this card, and it may be a good time to take a trip. The message from the fool above all else is keep on the move. Whether you're creating, whether you're doing something you like, whether you're grinding, just keep on the move. 
Therefore, if you do that, you can expect complete and total wish fulfillment here with the Ten of Cups. This is the end of an emotional journey. The cycle has ended. You can see the folks celebrating. They've planted all their seeds. We saw this yesterday. You had the folks celebrating. You have the folks celebrating here, but yesterday we had the Ten of Wands, that guy that was carrying those wands after a major burden was carried for a while. And now we have this resolution. It's complete. Anytime you have a Ten, it's the completion of a cycle. Yesterday it was the completion of the masculine element. That was which is active. And today we have the completion of the feminine element, which is emotions. It's water. So yesterday was fire and today we have water with the cups. And so the 10 of cups, it represents leadership. If you're imagining being a person with special qualities that's receiving appreciation and high status, this card is active. It's working for you. As you're assuming responsibility for others, you're serving, you're helping, you're loving, you're caring for people. You're helping them to recover the essence of whatever they lost over these last few years. So much has been lost, it's hard for us to recount and recall everything to where we may feel the new norm is to just be a little off. And that is not the truth. The Ten of Cups shows you everything the way it's supposed to be. Your kingdom in its entirety in accordance to your happiness. Understand that you're here now to maintain a superior position and this card reinforces that. Your superior position is reinforced with the Wheel of Fortune. This is a big upturn. It represents abundance. I like to look at this inverse. There are very few cards that I do. However, in this case, you can see the word Tarot spelled when you have it upside down. Toro stands for wheel or rota, R-O-T-A, rota also means wheel. So it's a play on words. It's to say as above, so below. You have this constant turning, moving between what you would perceive as challenging and fulfilling. However, in this case with the Wheel of Fortune falling pretty close to the center of the reading right after this wish fulfillment in a leadership role, this is a big upturn, a huge upturn in finances. So the Wheel of Fortune, it represents a change in direction, a change in circumstances or change in position. It's a rise after a fall, after you've laid your burdens down like yesterday. And it could represent putting faith in something that could be considered a gamble. However, you know deep down that your faith is backed by 100% security through the Lord. It's the only essence in this world that you can rely on 100% of the time. Otherwise, it's a coin toss. You don't know what you're gonna get. End up on the other side and suddenly you've got some challenges. So just know that those challenges are easily avoided by becoming the house instead of playing the casino. And the way you do that is you have to develop your worth from in and project it outward. So from within, sent out. This represents life cycles, closure of circles. You're adapting to the routine of everyday life. You found something that works, so stick with it. And this is a hint to some past lives, what you may have been in the olden days. As you see the Sphinx in the background, blue, electric blue. I think of Rama, some of the Hindu deities as well, and the eagle, and all these beautiful semiotic symbols with the Wheel of Fortune. But that's an upturn for sure. Let's put our... The Ankh was speaking to me this morning. Next up, we have the Page of Pentacles, Page of Coins. So this is a practical endeavor. You can see this young individual is concentrating on something material, something that's being manifest, possibly while neglecting or just ignoring that which is going on in the background which has a lot of similarities to this 10 of cups. So this to me speaks of a youthful figure or perhaps some part of you that is new and untapped, some creative potential within you that's now within reach. You see it, you feel it, you know it, it's here. And now you're starting to see the tangible success from the beginning. This is a solid material foundation that you now understand and see as a result of the Page of Pentacles and your continuation to work through this practical endeavor. And last in the reading for today, the Knight of Cups. This is a romantic offer. It's universally known as this. This is someone coming forward and saying, hey, I've got this cup. I wish to offer it to you. I poured my heart out into it. It's for you regardless of what happens. It's this type of gesture and it's the offering of your heart. The Knight of Cups is someone who's open, sincere, simple. They may have a simple heart. However, they appreciate who you are 
and wish for you to know all that they see as far as the qualities that you believe are best in you. They wish to tell you what they are, to act as a form of reflection. And that's why the water signs are great because you can see a reflection of yourself through these cards. So as much as this is someone making a romantic gesture, you also have this desire as well by activating this card. And through that, a potential lover may appear. And what that requires is to imagine it. So who's the ideal partner for you? Don't feel scarcity like this is the only one for me. There are 8 billion people on this planet, enough to where for every single breath you took in your life, if you were to see another option, you wouldn't even come close to seeing all of them. Which is to say, there are tons of people out there, especially now with technology, where if you feel like you may have lost an opportunity, I can assure you, there are so many beautiful, amazing human beings out there that express themselves in different ways. And the Knight of Cups is simply your way of exercising that practice of saying, hey, this is who I am. I'm simple enough to let you know that I love you and I'm thinking of you and I care about you and I wanna be with you. And how often do we hear folks say, I wanna be with you? How often do we hear people talk about the positive qualities in each other? How often do we hold hands? I mean, holding hands is just such a simple practice, yet it's so necessary. And I think since the pandemic, we've neglected it quite a bit. It releases oxytocin, which leads to the generation of a bunch of other great neurotransmitters, anandamide being one of them. The mood stabilizing and bonding hormones get released, and it's really important for us to give hugs, to be affectionate, to make gestures of love. They don't all have to be romantic in nature, just kindness. These gestures of love, they go long distances, especially with people who are now starving for this affection. It's been a long time since we've had it and we've been discouraged to share it. So we need to fix these things. And in doing that, by going deep, we will find strength and the fortitude to discover the hidden treasures within all of these messages for today. Thank you for being a part of this reading, for being here with me, for your energy for your blessings, for your goodness, for your comments. I've noticed people are coming around and here's what I wanna to say to all of you. Until we reach a thousand subscribers, I won't be able to go live and I really wanna go live as much as it's great to chop up and edit these things and make it really sharp and fun. I can imagine doing a nice lecture for an hour live, either in the woods, walking, driving, doing something different. And that option won't be available until we get to that 1000 subscribers. And then I'll be able to monetize and start to receive all of this beautiful abundance that's now showing itself. And so in order to achieve this, what I'm offering to you is an opportunity to receive a single card draw, something in this case, like looking at the moon, or if we wanna see what's beyond this, we can see, okay, the Ace of Pentacles, what does that mean? And I can draw a card for those who subscribe. So for subscribers, leave a comment and say, I would love a card drawn. And in the next performance that I give, in the next reading that I give, I'll be sure to draw your card and say, this is specifically for you and mention who you are. Whatever name you mention in the comments, I will say, so long as it's appropriate. And so, yeah, I mean, have fun with it if you want. That said, I will draw a card for everyone up until a thousand subscribers and you'll be part of the core. You know, once we get beyond that, we go to 10,000, we go to 100,000, we go to a million subscribers and beyond. I want to have a celebration where we are all together in this place, in this kingdom, and we're talking about these moments in the beginning when we were planting the seeds of creation to bring light and life into our lives and healing. And I'm going to remember all of you that were here in the beginning that supported this channel from the early concept of what this is and its evolution. It's taken a lot of turns. It's been around, this channel has been around for several years. And I finally feel like we're gaining some traction here. So be a part of the beginning seed and it will return to you, I promise. I know for sure because we have God backing this now and that's a new thing for me. So God bless you on this day. Thanks for being here. Until next time, be well, namaste. May the light within bless you on this day.